Thank you for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Hurricane Harvey continues to pick up steam with forecasters now calling it a Category 2 storm. They say it could be the most powerful storm to hit the United States since Superstorm Sandy nearly five years ago. CBN's Jenna Browder is on the story. You can feel the wind picking up right now. The ingredients to make a monster storm are coming together for Hurricane Harvey. It's now a Category 2 storm, with landfall expected early Saturday. Forecasters say Harvey could drop up to three feet of rain in some places. From Texas to Louisiana and Mississippi, people are getting ready. Apparently it's getting stronger and stronger. Loading sandbags, then boarding up doors and windows. We need people to be aware. That awareness leading to long lines at gas stations and grocery stores. Shoppers planning to ride out the storm, stocking up on food and supplies. Oh my gosh, look at the line. Clearing store shelves. There's no more water. Um, there's no more bread. The bread's already running out as well. Others are packing up and leaving town. We are going to, in the strongest possible terms, encourage the residents in the low-lying areas, as they say, get out of Dodge. With some mandatory evacuation orders going into place. At the same time, Lord, that we would be a calm, Lord, through you, a calm in the midst of the storm, Father. CBN's Operation Blessing is preparing to be on the ground, ready to help. So once the storm passes, we'll be able to go in in real time and offer life sustaining supplies, hot meals, volunteer management, and most importantly, We'll be there for the people of Texas and the Gulf Coast to pray with them, to love on them, and help them take the first steps of recovery. Jody Geddes has a personal message for those of you who have given to CBN and Operation Blessing. Without your support, this wouldn't be possible. So those that give to CBN and Operation Blessing, I want to personally say thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your prayer coverage, because we need it, not only here in the United States, but around the world. Hurricane Harvey is expected to become a Category 3 storm. The last storm of this magnitude to hit the United States was Hurricane Wilma back in 2005. Jenna Browder, CBN News. An atheist group is challenging President Trump's executive order, giving pastors more freedom to speak out about politics from the pulpit without fear of losing their tax-exempt status. The Freedom From Religion Foundation is seeking a federal court ruling ordering the IRS to enforce the Johnson Amendment, which restricts political speech by churches. Several churches and ministries are fighting back. The Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty is representing several groups in the case. It says the Johnson Amendment violates freedom of speech and religion. Pastors, priests, imams, and rabbis shouldn't have to get the IRS permission just to preach candidly to their congregations. That is so said Daniel Bloomberg, the legal consultant at the Beckett Fund. Attacks against Christians in India are increasing. Open Doors, a group that monitors global persecution, reports so far this year there have been 410 incidents targeting Christians. The total number of incidents in 2016 was 441. About 20 percent of the attacks were violent assaults on believers. Most of the attacks are carried out by Hindu extremists. Open Door says the attacks don't fear pun the, the attackers, excuse me, don't fear punishment because India's Hindu nationalist government will take their side. A former Hindu extremist who is now a Christian says the radicals want to stop Christians from sharing their faith. The Dead Sea is a natural wonder and popular tourist destination, but as CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell reports, this unique body of water is in danger of drying up. Sunrise over the Dead Sea, a soothing atmosphere, biblical landmark, and mineral treasure. It sits on the Great Rift Valley between Israel and Jordan, fed by fresh water from the Jordan River and mineral springs. It's one of the saltiest lakes in the world. So salty, no fish can survive in it. Nominated as one of the seven wonders of the world, the water, mud, and atmosphere have healing properties. But all this could disappear. The Dead Sea behind me is dropping five to eight feet a year. That means the lowest place on Earth is getting even lower. The reason is very, very simple. On one hand, there is all the time evaporation of water from and the surface is very large. On the other hand, good water from the upper Jordan were taken for irrigation to develop agriculture, to develop food uh, for the people, and they stopped reaching the, the Dead Sea. So the balance has changed. Hebrew University professor Avner Adin says 
there's only one way to restore the sea. What could save the Dead Sea is actually pouring water into the Dead Sea. Adin told CBN News a combination of solutions is the only way to help. One way which is the natural one, meaning let the rivers flow into it. Don't take the water from the Jordan, from the other rivers, let it come back to its natural uh, way. The other way is artificial, meaning making the Red to Dead Sea project um, come true. Israel and Jordan signed the Red Dead Agreement to make a 140-mile canal from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea. The billion-dollar project begins with a desalination plant to provide much-needed water and power to Jordan, then would drop the remainder of the water into the Dead Sea. Another way that in parallel could be done would be to take water from the Mediterranean and desalinate this water and give this water for drinking and for agriculture instead of taking the water from the Lake of Galilee and from the streams. But Adin said it's not easy to get governments invested in saving it. That's why activists Jacob Benzakin and Noam Bedin are sounding the alarm. I want to see the Dead Sea restored. Ben Zakin from a nearby kibbutz gives the only boat ride available on the Dead Sea. The purpose is to bring awareness to the Dead Sea, to the beauty, to everything that's going on, including the disappearing of the Dead Sea and the, the way to save it. And it's working. Over a year ago, photojournalist Bedin took the boat tour. And that touched me as an Israeli uh, to speak up for this enchanted, prehistorical, biblical place, to stand up for it. These salty pillars or chimneys may be stunning, but their appearance signals trouble. Bedin's photos show the drop in the water level in just one year. I've been documenting this uh, one-of-a-kind place like, ne like never before, going on this boat right over a period of time and documenting the beauty the magic of this place with the purpose to educate the next generation of this uh, one-of-a-kind place, but also showing the dramatic changes that this place has been taking. The drop has also caused huge sinkholes to open up along the shore, forcing beaches to close and a nearby road to collapse. The Dead Sea is a favorite tourist destination. It's so salty you can't sink, only float. But there's much more. In the Bible, a young David hid in the nearby caves of En Gedi. The Dead Sea Scrolls were found in the Qumran Caves, giving us the oldest manuscripts of the Bible. And the Dead Sea is actually giving life. The waters and air at the Dead Sea have special healing properties for skin and other ailments. And mineral mining yields potash, a key element for fertilizer used in agriculture to feed the world. So it's, it's a very special diamond that we should keep it. Biblical prophets also said that the Dead Sea would go through a change when the Messiah returns. Ezekiel prophesied that one day the waters of the Great Salt Sea would be healed and teeming with fish. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, The Dead Sea. A neighborhood picnic brings people together and helps to heal the racial divide in Baltimore. The story's next. Baltimore is on track to break records when it comes to the city's murder rate with more than 200 so far. It's one of many American cities caught in police clashes and racial tensions. Baltimore needs help. John Jessup shows us one effort to heal the racial division. Baltimore is a city of contrast, rich with history, but whose present is marred by violence and high crime. To address that, hundreds of volunteers have come together on this day to transform a simple city park into a safe haven of hope. Like a neighborhood picnic, families streamed into Baltimore's Collington Square Park for this Day of Hope event, treated to free food, fun, and prayer. You got to understand that when the devil is busy, God is about to open up the windows and bless us. Come on, somebody. After the unrest from the 2015 death of Freddie Gray, Police and pastors teamed up to break the growing cycle of violence. So what we've done is put out a clarion call for all those who are doing great work. Can't we come together, just like the dark side, great people of light, can't we come together and do things collaboratively so we can start chasing the darkness out of our city? That includes Mercy Chefs, which not only prepared enough food for 3,000, 
It will also stay here until kids return to school in September. Now I can feed you the very best meal that, that, that I or my master chefs are capable of. The very best meal. And you're hungry again tomorrow. But we come with a message that we know promises satisfaction for life. I'm glad everything we do, we do for you mothers that have been affected. And others, like a mother's cry, for moms whose children died in violent crimes. A lot of mothers feel like they're alone. And they need to be here to see it, to know that they're not alone. There's so many people that care about them. They'll never be forgotten. Murder claimed five of Sharon McMahon's relatives. I lost a son. I lost three nephews. And I lost a cousin. While these events can help to foster hope, healing, and a sense of unity, she finds motivation in the loss of her son. I think about him every day. And even people, I talk about him every day. He inspires me to do what I do to go to the communities and be part of the change. Organizers feel their efforts are paying off as their peace meals and prayer walks have led to virtual crime-free neighborhoods in 29 of the 30 areas they've served. And events like the Day of Hope help in other ways too. I've seen people who've come in not knowing what's going on and got help and felt loved and felt cared for. And then the next Day of Hope, say we have another Day of Hope a few weeks later in another part of the city, they show up and say, I want to volunteer. Now that the Day of Hope is over, the goal is to build on the momentum of goodwill and translate a summer of peace into a period of calm and quiet that lasts for every season. John Jessup, CBN News, Baltimore. Well, we are now headed to the kitchen to taste and see. Our chef is here to show us how to clean and store our fresh produce. And welcome back to CBN News Watch. We are continuing our regular look at food and nutrition with another round of O oh, Taste and See. Holistic health coach and chef Lindsay Gutierrez is back with us to give us the inside scoop on cleaning your produce. First off, I buy produce. Do I really need to clean it? Yeah, you definitely want to clean it. Uh, even if it's coming from an organic farm, mm -hmm. people have touched it, got it in the box, got it out of the box, loaded it for the market. So you definitely want to at least give it a, a good low rinse. Now, do you have to buy an expensive pre-packaged cleanser for your food, or can you do something on your own? What do you so think? So there's some great pre-packaged ones that are wonderful, mm -hmm. but really, I just use some organic white vinegar, just some white vinegar. That's it's it. really affordable, it's easy, <laughs> okay. or grapeseed oil works really well as well. All I do is I bring everything home from the market or mm -hmm. the farm and fill up my sink with some good water, give it a good splash of white vinegar, mm -hmm. and then give everything a good rinse. Berries especially are really good because if you put, you can even put the whole plastic part in there. Mm -hmm. Dunk the whole thing, okay. pull it out of the water, <laughs> make sure they get nice and dry. Mm -hmm. That vinegar keeps them from molding mm -hmm. and so acts as a nice little barrier and you'll keep fresh in your fridge for weeks. Oh wow, so vinegar will keep it from molding. Vinegar oh. keeps it from molding and you're not gonna taste it, it's not enough for that. All right, so I brought my groceries home, I've got my produce cleaned. How do I store it? What, do I, what, sh what should I be doing? So things like berries do like to breathe, so make sure they get laid out and dried nicely before you put them back in the fridge. Mm. And then pay attention to how your grocery store stores them, right? Oh. So if it's on the counter out there, mm -hmm. then it's safe on your counter. Okay. And if it's in the refrigerator, that's probably one that you want to keep in there. A little paper towel with some of your things like greens or whatever in a bag mm -hmm. where they can still breathe okay. kind of helps with some of the moisture. Now for those things that we have in front of us, real quick, just run through how you would store them. Yeah, so tomatoes are one that usually gets put in the fridge, but that makes them mealy and really terrible. So don't do that. I just that leave mistake. them on the countertop. Okay, Give them you. a rinse, leave them on the countertop and they'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Your zucchinis are not really a big deal. Give them a rinse, throw them in your produce bin with maybe a paper towel underneath. Okay. Same with peppers. Peaches can go on the countertops. Your greens, I usually pull apart and rinse and let them dry nicely. Mm. Put a paper towel in a big Ziploc bag and leave it open in the in the bin. All right, great advice. Make it easy. Uh, I need to do a little bit better about cleaning my, <laughs> my produce. Thank you so much. Lindsay Gutierrez, thank you so much for being here. And of course, you'll be back next time with a lot more right here on O oh, Taste and See. There's more of CBN Newswatch straight ahead. Stay with us. The surprising story of how Burma refugees brought new life to an American church has come to the big screen. The movie All Saints hits theaters today with a big name cast, including John Corbett and Christian comedian Shonda Pierce. Interpreter and then Michael Spurlock walked away from a business career to become an Episcopal priest more than 10 years ago. And it's been quite the journey. You go from paper salesman to preacher and your first job as a pastor is to shut down a church. 
that's what it became. What are you thinking when you take that job? That that's where God intended for me to be. Dear friends in Christ, the Reverend Michael Spur. His time as pastor is the focus of the film All Saints. As Father Michael prepares to shut down the church, persecuted Christians from Burma show up looking for help. We have welfare, but uh, many new family uh, sleep on floor, not enough food for their children. Well, maybe one of the bigger churches might be uh, we, able to... We are Anglican. I didn't know Korea had many... Korean from Burma. We uh, were occupied by the British. We learn about Jesus Christ from the British. The Anglicans? Yes, uh, we are Anglican Church, Episcopalian. Well, here's the thing, Yi Win. All saints is broke. We're, we're closing the church, we're broke. What is broke? When Ye Win and refugees show up at the church seeking shelter and help, and you're in the process of shutting down the church. What was it that made you open the door and do this? Jesus, I don't see how we could honestly claim the title of Christian and done anything differently. My faith in Jesus, my love of Jesus, just tells me there's only one answer. In this process of beginning the close down, you feel God speaks to you. Am I correct in saying he that? He did speak to me. What did he say? It was really the 11th hour mm. when we thought we had an offer on the church and we're going to have to accept it, that I took a walk out on the fields behind the church and God said, Michael, I have given you farmland and I have sent 65 expert farmers from the other side of the world. You're supposed to start a farm here. That's your future. As clear as that? As clear as that. So uh, corn here, tomato here, squash and a sour leaf. Seed from Burma. Uh, good thing you didn't land in Brooklyn. Because, you know, Brooklyn does. Hey, let's get started. It's up, it's up. All Saints Church sits on 22 acres of land, 17 of it just like this, farm rich, perfectly flat. In many ways, it not only produced food, it gave this church new life. As that miracle gets shared with the rest of the world, we watch as the film's stars join the real life heroes for the hometown screening. It's strange and it's wonderful. And because it's strange and wonderful, it seems to fit perfectly with this place because this is a strange and wonderful place. Consider the mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds. Yet it grows such big branches that the birds perch in its shade. John Corbett plays the role of Father Spurlock in the film. What was it about his life that you felt you, you, you wanted to project on the screen, that you wanted to deliver to make sure people felt? We have a kind of similar outlook on life, which is I'm now at this stage where I'm kind of bored with what I've been doing for 30 years. I realize I don't, how many summers do I have left? I'm 56, I wonder I have 20 summers left, good summers. And a lot of the, my time is spent thinking, what do I really wanna do with those summers? Is it to go to another movie set and say someone else's lines and wear someone else's clothes for six weeks, get the paycheck and then go home and wait for the phone to ring to do it again? Or do I wanna really shake things up and sell the house and move somewhere and kind of start over? That's what he did. He, he midstream just jumped out of the boat and said, you know, I'm done with this life. Now I wanna have a life of service and in the church and, um, I just really admire that, that he did that. Comedian Shonda Pierce once lived near the church and happily returned to Smyrna as a feisty church member. 
Look at Miss Delphia's hair. You could raise sparrows in there. She's mean as all heck. <laughs> and I can tell you exactly the women I was thinking of. Please share, please share. <laughs> so you know these women. I know these women, you know. <laughs> I grew up in the church. And so I tell people all the time, I've seen the good, bad, and the ugly. And uh, my part in this movie is one of the uglies. <laughs> Ruth was not a horrible person but she really um, represents a majority of folks out there that have a struggle with change. And, and that's, that's, uh, that's something that rings true in the church world in a lot of areas. And yet at the same time, she reminds me of a lot of church folks that get completely off focus of what the church is all about. And, uh, and that's why I love the story. Father Spurlock sees this as a story only God could have written. I've heard you say that you made some mistakes even in that journey um, of doing this. What were some of the mistakes? Well, a lot of farming mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Not being a farmer or knowing anything mm -hmm. about farming. Um, but you know, God yes. got Noah mm -hmm. to build a boat. Yes, he and did. Can you imagine the patience it must require to watch a farmer become a shipbuilder? <laughs> so God called a priest to be a farmer and you know, he had to have known this was not going to go smoothly. Even with a few bumps on the road, the harvest is getting richer at All Saints with its $850,000 mortgage paid in full and the church doors still open for business. It is now time for your Friday Faithful, and I'd like to leave you with this message as you wrap the week and make time for those weekend worship services. Remember this, relationship is better than religion any day of the week. It is exactly why Jesus came from heaven to earth. With that word, be sure to make this a fabulous Friday and a wonderful weekend. That will do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can reach out to us by emailing newswatch at cbn.com. You can, of course, also reach us on Facebook, Twitter, as well as Instagram. Hope you have a fabulous Friday and wonderful weekend. We'll see you right back here come Monday. Goodbye and God bless.